This is Oscar Bevis for the Stomping Ground, powered by Wow Hydrate and available on the zone. The best dressed man in the room, always the best dressed man in the room, Mr. Frank Warren. Um, Frank, I've just seen you do a little bit with the zone and with Eddie Hearn. Obviously, he has a dog in the fight, so there's a lot more emotion. Um, can you understand where he's coming from, though? A judge yeah, giving do. the media before. I, I actually congratulated him after the fight. I thought, I, thought, I thought it was a close fight, by the way. I don't think there's any wide margin. But I thought that Bibble won it by a couple of rounds. And I don't get the judge who gave it 8-4 to, you know, only gave him four rounds of the fight. I don't get that at all. Um, it's a shame because you've got a fight of that magnitude between two superb boxes. And uh, you get a judge make such a, you know, make a complete mess of it. But I, I, I did think he won it, Bibble. And as I say, I've got no axe to grind in it whatsoever. Uh, and, I th and I've got to be honest, I think Bibble's corner, uh, sorry, Be uh, Bebetier's corner going into the last round, sorry, the last two rounds, was saying to their man, you've got to knock him, out, knock him out to win it. Is it just, well, it is just disappointing that, again, this is a talking point after such a big fight? It is, and it was a great fight. I mean, it was a technical fight at some time. It was a tough fight. You know, they were, I mean, both of them, you could see them trying to use their respective... You know, the, the respective powers that they got, you know, boxer, big puncher. And there were times what I, I liked about Bill where he actually stood and traded. I mean, he, he stood toe to toe at times. And, you know, it's a, it, was, it, was a, it was a magnificent fight. And there's a neutral sitting there and got no skin in the game. It was, uh, you know, it was a privilege to watch. Yeah, one that we need a rematch of, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd, I'd watch that all day long. Yeah. Um, moving on to your man. Fabio Wardley. Yeah, he done what he, he had to do. You were talking about the 13th round. I didn't know the whole thing would end in the in the 13th round. I did, to be quite honest. I thought it. I, I generally, I said to you, I just felt that he would stop him. I felt that he, you know, last time out, I thought he won the fight. But those punches, he caught him with a tremendous right hand and hurt him with that punch. Then caught him with a good shot to the body, and then the next the next one, absolutely poleaxed him, and uh, he broke. He's either broke his cheekbone or his orbital. And uh, it, I mean, he was, it, you know, poor old Frazier was out on his feet on the, you know, on the ropes. I mean, he was literally knocked out on his feet. Yeah. Bad have you injury. Got, have you Bad heard injury. any news on Frazier? No, I haven't. He went to hospital. I, I haven't had any feedback yet from that. Yeah. What next for Fabio Wardley? Something well, big, a, of course. I, I've got to say, I mean, he's, he's, he's announced himself big time, hasn't he? And uh, there's some great fights to be made out there with fighters that are in the top 10 that get him into the top 10. Yeah, I mean, because of the excitement ringside, people were chucking about your Hergovic's and the like. Is he ready for that bracket of fighters that I've got to tell you something, he's, he's a handful. He's a tough sod, isn't he? He's got, he can punch and... I mean, if he catches anyone with those, they're going to be in trouble. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and, I, and I genuinely, genuinely feel that um, he's got the beating of some of those guys in the top ten. One thing's for sure, I mean, it's some world title fights you'd like, you know, a couple of those. Once this is all sorted out, the next, the next, uh, when the champions are defending their titles, after that, they're going to be looking to, obviously, there'll be defences again of those titles if they keep winning. He's going to be in there, isn't he, as a challenger, no doubt about that. And I'll tell you something, if he catches anyone, they're going to be in trouble with punches like that. Yeah, obviously, we saw last time in the 5v5, Eddie drafted in. Heavyweight. We love a narrative. Could there be one where Fabio Wardy is a Queensbury fighter against Matchroom in that February 5 Well, we haven't picked the weights yet, but once we pick the weights, we'll see. What weights have you got in mind? Well, I want a heavyweight bout, don't I? I bet you do. I, want, you know, I bet you do. Because we're... Uh, we, we, who are you going to pick from out of your 10 top heavyweights? We're not bad I don't know. We'll see. I think it should be all heavyweights. <laughs> what did you make of Chris Eubank's performance? Truth? He done what he had to do against an opponent he should be beating all day long which is what he did do, but I didn't think he looked great doing it. Even though there was knockdowns, I thought he looked laboured at times. I mean, I thought he was going to be over in the first round, but he looked quite laboured. Yeah. How does the Conor Ben fight go? My big thing about that is, first of all, he's got to, get, he's got to be licensed, number one. And number two is, it's the, the, the weight disparity. I mean, it's not one division, is it? It's two divisions. So that's going to be the intriguing thing. You know. Anybody who's anybody who's a bit lively are going to give him a, give him a problem. There's no doubt about that. We'll give Eubanks a problem. Yeah. Well, if it can't be Conor Ben, you've got Hamza knocking on the door. Oh, he, he will never fight him in a 
is. And by the way, Hamza's moved, looking at him tonight, Hamza's moved on from that. And I'm not saying I wouldn't, wouldn't do it, because I'd love to do the fight to be proven right. But Hamza's in a different league than him. Different league altogether. Hamza versus Yannibek, Riyadh season? We will see. Yeah, it's a tasty one. Um, just the final one, the disappointment from your side tonight, obviously in Raven Chapman. Um, you should have learned a lot from tonight. Just your take I, on I, that fight. I, I generally feel that's, that's a great observation. You know, she was in with... Look, sometimes you've got to roll the dice. And she was in with, a, with an opponent who's got an impeccable amateur record. Was it 140, 150 amateur fights? And she is a counter puncher. She, she's got a great eye, she's got great reflexes. And that's a fight you learn from. And you go and regroup. I think that was Raven's, what, 10th or 11th fight? I'm not sure which one it was. And uh, she now, you know, she's with us, so as you know, we don't, we're not gonna walk away from her. We'll, we'll get her back in the swing and she'll get another crack at the world title. Yeah. But well done, Sky, she boxed well. Yeah, I'm sure she'll get her hands on one, one day, Raven. I said last one, but I've actually got one more. Everyone flew into Riyadh about Sunday, Monday. As we leave Riyadh, how are promoter relations? Me and Eddie, we're all right. We're OK, he got a win, didn't he? He's been to be happy. He's had a win over us. And we had a great win. Yeah. Any other promoters you can talk about relations with? Well, there weren't, there's not a relationship. You know, we had, a, we had words, as you know, on the stage after all that soppy nonsense. And uh, I told him what the, what the position was. 